Franciscans celebrate the memorial of Blessed John Duns Scotus, who was born in Scotland in around the year 1265, when the great St. Thomas Aquinas and St. Bonaventure both died in the year of 1274, Scotus was about nine years old. Scotus went on to become arguably one of the greatest theologians in the history of the whole church, even though he died in 1308 at the relatively young age of 42 or 43. Blessed John Dun Scotus is remembered especially for three things, his teachings about the absolute primacy of Christ, his teaching on the immaculate conception of Our Lady and his love for the church and for the Pope. Firstly, on the absolute primacy of Christ, Scotus teaches that the second person of the Blessed Trinity, that the Word, would have become man even if Adam hadn't sinned. In case that doesn't sound right, uh, be assured, one, it's not heresy, and two, it's the opinion held by the majority of Christology experts nowadays that actually hold this one as the majority. Basing himself on the writings of St. John and St. Paul in the New Testament, Scotus says that God in creating had in mind first Jesus as the apex of all creation and after Christ, his blessed mother. Jesus was first in God's plan because no one could love God more intensely than the God-man, than God made man. That's why St. Paul in Galatians 4 Verse 4 says, in the fullness of time, God sent his son. And he says also in the letter to the Colossians, he says, all things were created through him, through Christ and for him. He is before all things, says the apostle in Colossians 1 verses 16 and 17. Scotus said this, he said, God wants the world for man who's destined for glory, and first among them, first among men, is Christ himself, sin or no sin. The situation of sin into which humanity finds itself, in which humanity finds itself because of Adam, added that Christ's incarnation was also redemptive. But believe it or not, uh, in a hidden way, shall we say, uh, in his writings, St. Thomas also affirmed the absolute primacy of Christ. He actually went back and forth between those two opinions of whether Christ's primacy was absolute or relative. But if you dig deep enough, you'll find that in, even in St. Thomas, he even mentions the absolute primacy of Christ. The second important teaching from Blessed John and Scotus is his teaching on the Immaculate Conception. And we'll save that explanation uh, if we're here for, I don't think we'll be here for the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception, but usually I save that for the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception to talk about how Scotus understood how Our Lady was conceived without sin. The third important teaching we have from Scotus is simply his love for the Church and his fidelity to the Pope. Scotus made his famous, his, the famous words of St. Augustine. St. Augustine said, I wouldn't believe in the gospel if I first didn't believe in the church, says St. Augustine. We know that St. Paul says in 1 Timothy 3.15, he calls the church the pillar and foundation of the truth, the church as the pillar and foundation of the truth. When speaking on faith and morals, Scotus said this, he said, quote, the Roman church never errs. The Pope has a universal jurisdiction over all believers, therefore, in order to be certain to not fall into error, it is necessary to believe as the church believes. Elsewhere, he writes that, quote, the scriptures have been explained with the same spirit in which they were written, and it must thus be believed that the Catholic Church has presented them with that same spirit with which the faith was delivered to us, that is instructed by the spirit of truth. In short, what's he saying? Scotus loved the church as any good son would love his mother. In 1303, Scotus had to leave France and to return to England because Philip the Fair, who was the king of France, wanted to affirm the authority of the state over the church, over the authority of the church, in order to make the church subject to his political ambitions. The king threatened all authorities, uh, religious and lay people, with severe punishments if they didn't side with him against the pope. Scotus, with some of his other brothers, courageously opposed King Philip and sided 
with the Pope, who I believe was Boniface VIII at the time. We still have a document actually written from that time with all the signatures of those who either adhered to or refused to adhere to the king's command. And among those signatures who refused to bend their knee to the king is that of John Dun Scotus. His enemies called Scotus the Hercules of the Papists. That was their way of uh, mocking him. And during the Protestant Reformation, his works were especially hated and even destroyed in Britain because of his fidelity to the church and his fidelity to the pope. And the origin of the dunce cap, which a child would wear when they were incapable of learning, and they would be forced to wear that, that actually comes from the Protestants as a way of mo mocking blessed John Duns Scotus. Dunce comes from duns, so it's a way of mocking someone who wasn't very intelligent. The Protestants used that against Scotus. In some of our friaries, we say a prayer every day for the canonization of blessed John Dun Scotus. And in that prayer of canonization, we praise Scotus saying this, quote, he lived his life in heroic obedience to the Holy Father, to the church, and to the seraphic order, unquote. I hope it's not one of those cases uh, which Jesus talks about in the Gospels when he denounced the scribes and the Pharisees for building the tombs of the prophets and praising them when in reality they didn't have anything in common with the prophets and they were about to crucify our Lord himself who had sent the prophets uh, in that sense. So on our part as Catholics and as Franciscans, Franciscans, let's not praise those who show heroic obedience to the church and to the Holy Father on one hand and then in another conversation, we start attacking the church and attacking the present Holy Father. That's not Catholic and it's not Franciscan. There's a disconnect there and we need to be careful about that. Otherwise, we're not living with the spirit of faith that Jesus has called us to live. Blessed John Duns Scotus is a reminder to us of the spirit of humility and obedience that should characterize every, every Catholic and especially every Franciscan. So let's ask for his intercession today and also let's ask that Our Lady would give us the grace and the wisdom and the spirit of humility and charity which marked the life of blessed John Scotus known also as the subtle doctor and also known as the theologian of the Immaculate. Praise be Jesus and Mary.